Hi. Hey, everyone. See so you're all joining in. Thanks so much. You're probably in the process of connecting and getting your audio settled and everything, but we are so excited that you're here. It's going to be a great panel. We have some awesome, awesome panelists here with us tonight, or maybe it's in the morning. Who knows where in the world you are at this time, but wherever it is, we're so glad that you chose to spend this time with us. Just going to hold on for another minute or two uh, while we let kind of our some of our fellow admitted students join, uh, but we're so excited. Thanks so much. And we're gonna get started in just a minute or two. All right, hey, everyone. We may have some kind of folks joining in as, as we get the ball rolling here. We also have one of our panelists, Rabbi Jordan, has been having some Wi-Fi troubles as these, as these things tend to go. So hopefully he'll be back in shortly. But first of all, congratulations. We are so, so excited to, to welcome you here tonight. This is potentially the first interaction you've had with any of us here at Emory since your acceptance. And so congratulations on that. As you all know, there were so thousands and thousands of applicants and we chose the best of the best and that's you all. And so we're so excited to offer you this spot. Hope maybe some of you have already deposited, which is amazing. And, and we're so glad that you have done that. And for those of you who haven't, we're just gonna give you a little bit of a taste of kind of how we do things here at Emory. And we wish you all the best in this de decision process. My name is Josh Beskin. I'm an admission counselor here at Emory. I'm also a very proud Emory alum as well. So I was in the similar shoes to the students that you see in front of you here today, just a short time ago, but we are so excited you're here. And without further ado, I'm going to pass it along to our panelists to ask them to introduce themselves. So Rabbi Jordan, I see you've logged back on. I know we always have these troubles on Zoom sometimes. So do you wanna start us off and maybe give us kind of a brief introduction about kind of who you are and, and what your kind of role is here at Emory? Thanks, Josh. Uh, just being sure that I'm not muted, I'm not. Uh, so my name is Rabbi Jordan Bronig. I'm the Jewish chaplain in the Office of Spiritual and Religious Life. Uh, here at Emory, and part of the role of our office is to see after the spiritual and religious needs of students while they're in college. Uh, so much of, of our time in school, and particularly in university, is focused on like what's happening up here in your head and how you're learning and studying. And our office is kind of a, a place where people are reminded that they are actually like a full human being with a head and a heart and trying to make the connections between the two. Um, I'm very lucky in our office to be uh, part of a team of chaplains uh, that includes a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Christian chaplain, our dean for our dean of the of religious life in the university chaplain, Reverend Dean uh, Greg McGonigal, our uh, Muslim life scholar, Dr. Isam Vaid, who is our long timer in the office, uh, who has been here for, for over 30 years and is a real, you know, boon to the, to the Muslim community on campus. And it's just for me, it's such a pleasure to get to work with them, but also to see the communities that they lead and to meet students who are really inspiring and inspired people. So I'll, I'll pass it, I'll pass it to those students. Thanks, Rabbi Jordan. Um, Aditi, do you want to get us started by introducing yourself? Sure. Um, hi, my name is Aditi. Um, I am currently a third year at the college studying uh, neuroscience with a minor in religion. Uh, when it comes to spiritual and religious life, uh, I currently work at the Interfaith Center, which has just opened up this year. Um, I uh, currently am the student coordinator with Joanna um, on our WISE pre-orientation program. So some of y'all do sign up for that program. You'll be sure to see me and her. Um, and I've also been a peer mentor for WISE for the past two years. 
Uh, for some context, BISE is our PREO program that we do, do that introduces our incoming first years to like, the diversity of spiritual and religious life we have on campus and in Atlanta. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we're so excited about all of our pre-orientation programs, but WISE as well, because we we have some, some programs here that are kind of have specific themes when it comes to our pre-orientation. Maybe you're interested in learning more about religious life here at Emory or in Atlanta. Maybe you want to go outdoors for a few days. We've got a lot of different um, pre-orientation programs that I actually did when I came here to Emory and made a lot of friends there. And it was a really great experience. And so thanks for, for bringing that up. And hopefully for our students who are who are attending here tonight, if you come to Emory, I, we all, of course, would highly encourage you to take advantage of those pre-orientation opportunities, especially WISE, because it's such an awesome program. And as you can see here, we have some amazing coordinators. So on that note, Joanna, you want to say hello? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Joanna Lissagbo. I am a current second year in the college studying biology and German on a pre-med track. I'm in terms of spiritual religious life. I'm very involved in CBC, which is our collegiate Black Christians on campus, as well as RUF, which is Reformed United Fellowship. I also am a student coordinator for WISE, which stands for Welcoming Interfaith and Spiritual Exploration. So for any students that are want to get involved in interfaith dialogue or get involved in spiritual religious life here at Emory, it's definitely a great program for you to sign up. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least, Mohammed, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Mohammed Atel Fadil. I am a rising senior, actually. So I'm finishing up my third year in the college. I am majoring in chemistry with a minor in Arabic on the pre-med track. And I, in terms of spiritual and religious life, I've been involved and been a part of the Muslim Student Association for the past three years, um, and I will be one of the incoming co-presidents for the upcoming school year. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing a bit about yourself, everyone. We've got clearly incredible deep knowledge of all things spiritual and religious life here at Emory on this panel tonight. I also wanted to say for the attendees, feel free to utilize the Q&A function. That's how we're going to kind of interact with y'all um, in this panel tonight. So any questions, that you're curious about kind of whether it's something that comes up in our conversation or a, a question that you may have just kind of all things spiritual and religious life here at Emory, feel free to utilize the Q&A function. We've got some questions ready to go to kind of ask our panelists, but we also, this is an event for you and to, to wanna know kind of what questions are on your mind that could maybe help kind of sway the decision that you're making or that perhaps learn a bit more about Emory because you're already deposited and going to be here in the fall. Either way, just encourage you to utilize that Q&A function. And sometimes if there's kind of something that I can link to or answer in the chat, I'll go through it that way. But if but if there's a question that I, I would love to present to our panelists, um, we'll be doing it that way as well. So I just wanted to plug that from the start. Feel free to utilize that function. But let's see, let's let's start off with a question. I'm kind of curious for, for everyone here, for I guess the, for the students specifically, when you kind of came to Emory, what, were you kind of seeking these kind of groups on campus right away? Or was it through connections that you made or research that you did kind of, what was your, your relationship and how did you come to kind of do all of the amazing things that you do with the office and everything that falls under the umbrella? Anyone feel free to just chime in. I'm going to go for it. Um, so I guess for me, basically, I was I always grew up in like a Muslim community. So I felt like coming to Emory, I was like, I really wanted to be a part of a Muslim community. Um, and that's something that's like I've been really passionate about. Um, so I like came to our like first Friday prayer, which is called Juma. Um, and I saw a lot of people there, a lot of familiar people, and I set, like made connections with them, and they encouraged me to play, be a part of Emory, I'm going to say. Um, and, like, I feel like that in it of itself is what kind of made me, like, become more involved with spiritual and religious life and, like, um, the Muslim community in general, which kind of made me, like, want to become, like, the president, essentially, this year. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. I can go next. Um, I grew up in a very Christian household, but during high school, I got the time to kind of explore my religion and faith for myself. So I knew in college that I wanted to be involved 
in some sort of religious organization and I got involved in CBC. They had like a first year lunch on the quad. So we all got to eat lunch with the current CBC members. And that was like right after the first day of classes. And so I got really involved super quickly. But then also doing the wise orientation, I did it as a first year. Um, here, I got to listen to a lot of people that were in a lot of clubs. Like we had people from MSA speaking, people from like a lot of the Christian clubs, from the Hindu so Students Association. So I got to speak to a lot of students from there. And then from there, I met a lot of friends and we could go to these different events together. So even though I do like say I'm a member of like CBC and RUF, um, I do like to frequent like different religious events with my friends that I met from WISE. So we will go to like a few weeks ago, we went to the sister soiree for MSA. Uh, we go to a lot of different events on campus. So there's a lot of different things for you to explore here. Right. Um, yeah, I kind of like growing up as a Hindu and uh, like in, I guess I grew up in North Carolina, so very much a non-Hindu environment, kind of being able to see how much I had in common with my peers, even though we both came from different religious backgrounds, kind of like gave me that initial like interest into interfaith dialogue and conversation. Um, I kind of didn't really realize it was a passion until I did um, WISE and I was like a peer mentor for WISE um, entering into my sophomore year. And that was kind of when I was like, oh my gosh, this dialogue is really interesting. This is really fun. This is something that I really care about. And so um, like this was kind of a passion that I discovered like a year or so into college and it's kind of like grown and now like I work at the interfaith. So um, definitely not something I came in thinking I would do, but definitely something I'm really interested now. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Some people, y'all you know, were saying that you were ready to guide into those communities right away. And that the, you said it took you a little bit more time. And Emory is a place for, for students to really figure out what kind of the experience they want outside of the classroom. And because of all the amazing organizations we have here, students are able to kind of find, find their community. And, and as each of you kind of touched on, getting involved in other communities and taking part in some of their kind of religious practices or events or things like that as well. Rabbi Jordan, I'm curious, I actually realized I've probably never asked you this before, what was kind of your journey to Emory and how did how did that come about and what has your relationship with the religious community at Emory, how has that kind of grown and changed over the years? Great. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I, you know, I was a, I was a Hillel rabbi at Tufts University before coming to Emory and um, when this position opened, it was just this this idea of being a university chaplain, of getting to serve um, students from all faith backgrounds. So, you know, like while my work is primarily with the Jewish community, um, I count like as my students, like every every student in the in all the colleges, you know, in the college, in the law school, in the med school, um, and it's a a role that has uh, that continues to grow and unfold in each year. Um, and sends me to places like, you know, the anatomy lab one day, um, working with medical students, um, and then, you know, serving on a panel at Rollins in our public health school the next week. And, and you know, scattered in between. And a lot of what our chaplain team does is a lot of spending time in coffee shops on the quad, talking to students, hearing about where they are. And I, and I loved hearing from uh, Mohammed and Joanne and Aditi about their journeys because it really is a mix in terms of there are the people who come to Emory and they know I am going to be involved in religious life and then there are the people for whom it sort of surprises them and they're like oh how did this how did this happen and you know what we want is for um, people do not feel like they have to check any part of their identity at the door when they come to college or put a pause on their on their life and their faith while they're here, but rather um, let it develop and use the critical lenses that you're developing in your classes to think about your own um, your own religious life. I, uh, you know, we we have as as Joanne was mentioning, some of the we have ten Christian affiliated communities on campus. We have three Jewish communities. We have a thriving. Hindu and Buddhist and Muslim community on campus. And and I love popping into the Emory Buddhist Club that my my colleague Venerable Priya will lead meditations. And it's people who come from, you know, come from uh, Buddhist 
homes from that tradition and then lots of people for whom college is a time for like getting to try on new practices and and discover mindfulness techniques that might be an anchor in their lives after college and I like that sense that like okay like one week I stop at Shabbat dinner at Hillel um and then, you know, like last week I went to a Jewish event on campus and then I was able to like go to the iftar that was happening, the like Ramadan break fast that was happening outside of Canon Chapel and connect with some of the amazing Muslim students in our community. And, you know, passing by like the holy celebration that was happening on, on you know, on campus. It's just like, it, there's always some way to connect. And I love that about MRA. Thanks for sharing that. I I, lo I love everything that you're saying and more. And I, I think we're going to find kind of a little bit more details about through the rest of today. But I think that that idea guides everything that we do. And that I love what you said about how you don't have to check any aspect of your identity at the door. We want to make sure that students, regardless of if they are religious and spiritual in a specific kind of denomination, or if they're not at all and they just kind of want to experience what we have to offer here we we can share that with students so thanks for sharing that i wanted to bring in a question kind of one that we got through the q a um, but that i'm kind of kind of expand on a little bit here which is kind of talking about the spaces that we have on campus kind of the built environment of religious and spiritual life and if y'all could share um, some of your experiences in the spaces that we have on campus, you know, from our chapel to, I know a couple of y'all mentioned the Interfaith Center that we're so excited kind of opened up in the last year or so here at Emory. So if you can talk about those physical spaces that you've navigated through and how that has kind of played into the events and the communities that you find yourself a part of here at Emory. Uh, I'm happy to start this off. So um, the Hindu community does artis every Friday um, in Canon Chapel. Um, and so I guess to like kind of explain the way that Emory does their spiritual and religious life stuff, um, there is like, there is a chapel on campus called Canon Chapel. And Canon Chapel, even though it has like chapel in it is kind of a space that's used by a lot of different uh, religious groups to like have a bunch of events. So on like a weekly basis, Canon Chapel will host a Hindu Arti. Um, there's a tent outside right now for um, Iftar for Ramadan. There's um, Below the Community, which is a Christian uh, group meets there every week. And so um, we'll see a lot, like this one space kind of being and serving as a place of unity for a lot of different religious and cultural groups. Um, and so I think that kind of go, asks, answers a person's question if there are Christian chapels on camp, campus, um, which is that like, yes, there are, there's groups that kind of meet in this chapel. And there's also different groups that like kind of like have their like own times and spaces and slots in there. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Does someone else kind of want to chime in and talk about their experience in our new interface center that we have? Yeah, I can chime in. So actually yesterday we just had a WISE reunion. So for all of our WISE peer orientation members and peer mentors, we all came together in the interface center. We got boba, we were playing cards. But it was really nice to see people from the first year of WISE that they did fully in person. And they'd even have the Interface Center come and visit the Interface Center for the first time. Their pictures are all up on the Interface Center. So it was nice to see them, like, recognize themselves. And then talk to students and see, like, they did it their first year and seeing how they got involved in religious life on campus and how they continue to grow, even though they did it their first year, and how they continue to be involved with the Interface Center and different aspects of religious and spiritual life on campus. Thanks for sharing. I'm I'm happy to to say a, a little bit about the about you know ways in which I've seen the Interfaith Center used in its first year on campus, which I mean has been really exciting for us because it has been an idea that was in the making for from what I understand close to close to twenty years of sort of visioning a place that can be a home for for people to be in conversation and. Um, it's it's a cool place. It's a it's an old house that is 
um, just across from the law school at the corner of Clifton and North Decatur. And there within the space, there is a kitchen that gets used as sort of a hub in the way that kitchens often are, where people come in, they get snacks, they, they uh, maybe bring meals and dine together and maybe in the conference room or in the lounge downstairs, all of the chaplains have offices within within the Interfaith Center. Um, upstairs, there's a beautiful meditation room where you know various communities use for you know either Bible studies or for meditation. There's a space that can be either a prayer space or a lecture space. There are uh, next to it ablution stations for washing for Muslim prayer. Um, it, you know, it's it's sort of we're we're seeing quickly the like hustle and bustle of the place on a given on a given week where it's like, oh, there's like a program happening most nights in the in the interfaith center. And it feels like if this is what it's like in the first year, like I'm excited to see what like by year five, what it's going to feel like in the in the space. Um, we're going to actually have a dedication of our shrine rooms downstairs. So um, particularly for the. Buddhist and Hindu um, communities, it's been a really nice for there to be a space that is for that, you know, for that community to have um, altars and, um, and shrine and shrines set up um, so that if someone wants to come in and have a few minutes of alone time, um, they can, they can go into the shrine room. Um, it is, you know, it, it's, an, you know, you know, and that, and now there is within there, there is also a space for Sikh students um, and, and, and our Hindu chaplain, uh, Shweta Chaitanya is, is also helping to serve the Jain and Sikh communities as well as the Hindu community. She's like sort of uh, focusing on, on a lot of the South Asian traditions. And so, I don't know, I mean, for me, it just feels like this has been a, this is a moment of real like opening and possibility for our office. Do you want to add anything, Mohammed? I saw you unmuted yourself or all covered there. Yeah, I mean, I guess they kind of pretty much said it all. Um, the Interfaith Center has been like a welcoming environment to a bunch of different students. Like I can speak of it from like the Muslim perspective, like a lot of, we had a lot of wonderful events there. We brought in like guest speakers, guest lectures. And like they enjoyed the space, they had a lot of fun there, and we had like an environmental workshop there. And I remember at the like the beginning of the school year, they there was like a dinner for like all the religious life leaders, which was kind of a nice thing, kind of like getting to know people, um, and like people from different backgrounds and like in engage in that interfaith dialogue, which is kind of like the whole premise of that interfaith center, which is something that I think um it's a very good addition to the Emory community. Josh, if I could say like one more thing Please. about space, about spaces on campus, is that you know just thinking about the high holidays for for in terms of Jewish life, it's a it's a good example of the ways in which campus life can sort of open up um, the possibilities. So you know our Jewish life affiliates are Hillel and Chabad and Meor, and on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I feel like Hillel was having uh, services in the Hillel building, which is steps from, from campus. Um, there was also a service happening in Brooks Commons, which is part of Cannon Chapel. There were services happening at the Chabad house, also very close to campus. Um, Rabbi Yaakov Fleschel at Meor was having students hosted in homes in Toko Hills, which is a neighborhood that is, that is like adjacent to Emory. And uh, and I was hosting a service in the Campus Life Pavilion, sort of an outdoor Emory service that was open to students and staff and faculty. And it was sort of like all of these options. And for students, it's a great opportunity to get to like pop from one place to the other. Oh, I went to Hillel for this, but I'm going, you know, to break fast at Chabad and I'm going to go to Rabbi Jordan's service in the Campus Life Pavilion and sort of getting, you know, so in so much of our lives, we go to like one church or mosque or synagogue and that's our place 
and college can be a time in which you get to get pop around a little bit and get to sort of experience the varieties of of practice even within your own community yeah i love that thank you for adding that on we we see that with various traditions here where there are so many different spots on campus you were kind of touching on this aditi where there are spaces that yes may kind of be traditionally thought about as being for one kind of religion or one group but there are so many spaces on campus that open up to to everyone in kind of their their time that they need more space whether it's the high holidays whether it's our ramadan events that we've had going on and it's just we really see the whole the whole campus in, in terms of the physical space is invested in being there for whatever students may need in that specific time so thanks thanks for bringing that up i wanted to follow up with kind of another question here. Again, thanks for your questions in the Q&A. Feel free to keep those coming. This will, this will we wanna hear what you, you are curious about. So thank you for doing that. I'm gonna kind of add again, a little twist to a question that we got. And so the question here is kind of asking about mission trip opportunities. So I guess kind of the first part of my question is if anyone's kind of familiar with, with that happening on campus, but more broadly, kind of, and I know especially WISE does a great job of this, is how does kind of the Emory Religious and Spiritual Life community connect to the Atlanta community? And kind of whether it's these opportunities like you were mentioning, Rabbi Jordan, getting students in homes in Toco Hills or visiting different kind of prayer spaces around the city and potentially, you know, any type of abroad opportunities as well. But if anyone can kind of speak to the the presence beyond kind of the, the Emory of bubble, as we can call it sometimes. Yeah, I can speak on that. Um, as a student that is from Atlanta going to Emory, um, I know one thing that I really emphasize for like my groups like RUF is going to different churches in Atlanta. So usually on Sundays, they'll have like a spreadsheet of who's going to which church. You can sign up to go in a car with them to go to that specific church. So there's a few in our area, like in Toka Hills, like Rabbi Jordan was mentioning, or there's a few that's like a little bit further in downtown Atlanta. So we have a lot of students that go to those different church services on Sunday. Um, I know like just being as a participant in other clubs, I know the Buddhist club does a lot of trips to Buddhist monasteries in the Atlanta area and they do um, retreats so you can actually stay over there for the weekend and go to Atlanta or even further I know one time they went to South Carolina or different areas in the southeast so that's a different way to get plugged in not just in the Emory community but also in the Atlanta community um, and I know CBC for my other um, club we do a lot of worship nights with a lot of churches downtown as well and so we'll have like a bus that shuttles students back and forth and then there is a specific program on Mondays at 7 p.m. I usually, usually say it's the same time every year um, that a shuttle will come to Emory and take students to Buckhead Church and they'll do worship nights there and they give free dinner so a lot of students from CBC and a lot of other Christian organizations will sign up for that shuttle and then go um, to the Buckhead Church for their specific youth night so it's just a lot of college students from Emory, um, Georgia State University, Georgia Tech, Agnes Scott College so you get to interact with students not just at Emory but a lot of students in the Atlanta area. Thanks Joanna. <laughs> Anyone else have Atlanta experiences that they can share from their involvements on campus? If not it's okay. Rabbi Jordan, do you want to maybe kind of speak on some yeah. stuff? Because I know you've been out and about in Atlanta. You know, our <laughs> office has a, our office has a history of of leading of leading trips both um, you know locally in the southeast and some international trips, and that has kind of since COVID gone by the wayside. The sort of international travel, but we do hope to um, you know to reboot some of those opportunities because. Often we would go and actually go to places in the world that have experienced strife or conflict and go from a religious, you know, visit these places with a religious lens on to talk about how the religious communities and faith communities sometimes can be voices of reconciliation and healing, uh, whether that's in um, South Africa or Northern Ireland. Um, I want to go to those places. So I'm hoping that we get to do that again. Last year, we took a, a trip as an office and along with campus partners 
to Montgomery, Alabama, to the Equal Justice Initiative. And um, and I wasn't able to be there, but a few of my colleagues were, and they said it was just a powerful moment. And, it, you know, we are in Atlanta, we are in the South, in the Southeast, and we want as an office to take advantage of the fact that there's a lot to learn about, um, about, sorry, about the civil rights struggle and about the in ongoing work for uh, racial justice in this country while we're here, you know, while we're here. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I think students will find maybe if you're attending this tonight, maybe you've attended some of our other panels or you'll be going to more of them coming up or perhaps we'll see you at preview day in just a few days on campus. But that's, I think, that's something that we really emphasize as a university is that we're so grateful to kind of have this home here in Atlanta. And it wouldn't be fair of us to just accept that and to not partner with the city and to not volunteer in the city. Over 80% of our students volunteer in the city of Atlanta during their time here. And so whether it's our kind of topic here tonight, spiritual and religious life, or many other different communities and campus partners, engaging with the city of Atlanta is, is so crucial to what to what we do here. And so I'm, I'm glad we were able to spend some time kind of talking about that from this lens, but you'll see whether you've toured campus or you're coming to some of our events coming up that our, our partnership with Atlanta, and yes, it's in service and in, in learning and all of that, but also just for fun as well. It's something that we really try and um, prioritize while we're here. So thanks for touching on that, Rabbi Jordan. And I know you maybe had a couple of questions or things, thoughts on your mind as well you wanted to share. I want to, you know, I, I love to focus on the student on the students who are here and on their voices and their experiences. So I thought I would ask everyone if they would just sort of share with participants in the webinar um, a memory that is um, an important moment, a moment that speaks to what religious and spiritual life at Emory is all about. Um, if if each person can think of well, you know whether it's in your own personal community or at, in a religious council or at Wise, um, something that sort of says like this is what it is to be this is what it is to be part of these communities at Emory. I can kind of go for it. Um, I guess it's kind of relevant right now. So we're observing the month of Ramadan, and I feel like. The Ramadan iftars or the Ramadan dinner is breaking of the fast has been a significant memory of like my three years at Emory thus far. And I feel like just getting to break fast with everybody the same, like for the for 30 deep days, um, Monday through Friday, um, and kind of like getting to communicate and getting to engage and talk to people. Um, and like these iftars, not it's not only Muslims who come to them, like a lot of like non-Muslim students uh, um, come to our iftars, which is kind of nice because like they get to engage with our community, kind of get one to know more. And like, if they're interested, they'll kind of like engage and something like that. I feel like that's something that Emory's been doing a great job with like, um, and I feel like it has been a pivotal part of like Emory's experience. I think um kind of like talking about climate wise, which is something the rabbi mentioned. Um, I kind of come from like a place like, like growing up in the south. I kind of got a lot of like people, you know, thumping on our door every like Saturday Sunday morning with the Bible, like the desire to convert. Um, and that's not something that I think. Uh, that really that's not something I think is appropriate and also shaped my view on how like people think about like the tradition that I come from and um, so being able to go into wise and seeing people genuinely be open to learning more about other faith traditions different than their own and being open to receiving and learning was just such a wholesome and positive experience because it really showed me that like just because this was the experience that I had when I was growing up with uh, this constant, like, you know, desire to like proselytize at me, that doesn't have to be the way that like we all approach spiritual and religious life. And so it was a very heartwarming, sweet moment to realize that um, interfaith relationships and interfaith engagement is something that is very much possible. Thanks for sharing. 
Josh, do you mind repeating the question? Yeah, I guess um, Rabbi Jordan's wonderful question was kind of what is one memory that kind of stands out to you or one experience that stands out to you from your your time at Emory kind of in the spiritual and religious life space that you wanted to share with the, our attendees tonight? Oh, yeah, sorry. My volume cut out for a bit, but one really great moment besides WISE, I have a lot of great moments from WISE, but um, recently we did um, a large group with RUF, CBC, and a lot of the other uh, Christian organizations on campus so we got to go outside and eat barbecue with all of them and then talk and discuss which was really nice um we also had a shabbat dinner recently it was ruf and hillel and so we get we got to interact with the jewish community on campus we got to eat dinner with them and it was such a wholesome moment to kind of see two different faiths coming together and like it it was really beautiful to see like people talking to each other haven't really interacted um outside of you know, our moment together and then getting to eat and commune with others, I think was such a beautiful thing to see. So we usually do that every year, but this is the first time that I've been able to experience it. So it was definitely a really great moment for me. Thank you all for sharing. Those were so wonderful. And it's always, it's always great to hear about the different things that you all are involved in the memories, and I know each of you probably could have had many more experiences that you could have shared from your, your time at Emory. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's let's see, we've got, we don't have any more questions in the Q&A. Just a reminder, this is kind of your time. If you have any questions of our current student, a Rabbi Jordan here to come speak about the religious and spiritual life experience here on campus, please, please don't be shy. And we want to kind of help in any way that we can in this kind of decision time that some of you may be faced with as well. I guess this is kind of one question that I'm curious about. This is for, for kind of, Joanna, I know you're familiar with this question, being involved in our student ambassador program, but in this may or may not have to do with spiritual and religious life. But one thing that may be helpful for our attendees to hear tonight is kind of what drew, drew you to Emory? whether to apply and then when you eventually decided to come here, kind of what drew you in, and it may be spiritual and religious life, it may be something else, but kind of why why Emory? And also now that you've been here for some of you almost, you know, three years, what is what has kind of kept you excited and passionate about the Emory community? Yeah, I can take that one. So I am from Atlanta, but I did want to go to a school that was not only in a city, but wasn't too like big or it wasn't too small. And I think Emory has that perfect mid-sized campus that you can always meet someone new, but you're not just seeing the same faces every day. Um, and I wanted to go to a school where I was really allowed to explore in terms of academics. And I didn't know what I wanted to be when I came into school, but through Emory, I was able to like really see different academic backgrounds and see what I can use my major for after I graduate. If like, if you ask any of my friends, I change my major every week, but Emory really allows for students to kind of explore and not have like a set major until like, you don't even have to choose your major until second semester or sophomore year. So you have a lot of time to kind of explore and see what you want to do. And what keeps me at Emory, um, I am still second year, so I still have two more years left, but I really enjoyed all of the experiences and opportunities that I've been able to get at Emory. Um, as a first generation American, like both of my parents are from Nigeria. I was born in Nigeria that came here to Atlanta. Um, seeing things that I've seen people not being able to have access to that I've been able to have access to at Emory. I've been able to get involved in some cool research that I never thought I would have been able to get into in high school. I've been able to meet friends from all around the world. Like my roommate is from China. I would have never met them if they, if I wasn't at Emory. Getting involved in a lot of different clubs and organizations such as WISE and such as being involved in Christian life that I wasn't expecting to be involved in as I got to college. Um, just a lot of different opportunities. And you, as you go on, you get involved more and more and more and you get to see more of what Emory has to offer. So that's why I'm excited to, stay here for the next two years and it's just been a great experience so definitely why I chose Emory was like a good campus by good school to explore for academics but I've gotten so much more out of it than I ever would have imagined 
I guess kind of echoing what Joanna said. Um, I guess the re um for me, kind of like the reason I wanted to attend Emory is one like the immense amount of opportunities that Emory had to offer. Um, and like I wanted to go. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, so I wanted to explore a different city. Um, go to unfamiliar territory, kind of like expand my horizons. And I feel like Emory has been like has been um um something that I'm really grateful that I'm attending here because like I've had numerous amount of opportunities that I've been a part of since I was a freshman at Emory and I feel like those opportunities have are what are kind of like keeping me going throughout my Emory experience and I feel like, and that's something that I'm really grateful for. Uh, kind of similar to what Muhammad said, um, I came to Emory similarly for uh, the opportunities that this campus has, um, or which it has just so many, I feel like. Um, and that was kind of my initial desire. Uh, I'm pre-med as well. And so like Emory being, having a lot of hospitals and research and everything just kind of made a lot of sense. Um, but along the way, I think I've kind of uh, discovered that like Emory also has a lot of room and like place for you to like have like interpersonal growth which I think is really important um and so kind of like came in reaping the benefits of the opportunities that are here but also really appreciating and enjoying the opportunities that Emory gives beyond just career um career things as well you know I didn't come here I didn't go come here as an undergrad but I feel lucky to be on on this campus it's just like something new happening every day, new new opportunities for connection. I'm thinking of like, you know, our Voices of Inner Strength Gospel Choir, which is one of the one of the organizations out of our out of our office. And just when I go to a gospel concert that my that our colleague Maury Allums is is the director of the choir, and I just see the like joy and the sense of connection that's like overflowing in the room i'm just like this is so cool like i get to i get to be a part of this space and welcomed in and everything every door is open um on campus in general and and certainly within um in a religious life um i haven't even mentioned that we have like an interreligious council of student leaders from all of the different faith communities on campus from those that have like a chaplain that represents them and those that don't have a chaplain, you know, so we have like, you know, our Eastern Orthodox students leaders on campus and uh, and students who are uh, who are connected to the Catholic Center, and, you know, along with along with various Protestant students and Hindu and Muslim and Buddhist and Jewish. And, you know, it's just everyone coming together once a week to eat dinner together and be in conversation together. And it happens in the, in the DCT and our, and the, and do, at the Dobbs common table, the sort of campus dining facility, because people do connect um, over food and it is, you know, I get to pop in from time to time. And I just like, I love seeing what students are up to and what they're talking about. And we hope that the office of, of spiritual and religious life can be a resource even in challenging times. So, you know, Right now, ex with the experiences that are happening in Gaza and in Israel and all of the the tragedy that is unfolding, um, Dr. Veda and I have been hosting these small group conversations for um, civil and compassionate conversation across difference that I think, um, you know, it is really easy on social media to sort of, you know, see the worst in people or to like, you know, to want to like just lay into someone. And in real life, often when you hear about sort of values that are driving someone, the experiences that are at the heart of their of, of their life experience, it, it just sort of makes connection and empathy and understanding feel possible. And, you know, we aren't coming up with solutions to all of the world's problems, but it feels a little bit closer every time we have one of these conversations and I feel a little glimmer of hope and in a time that feels so hopeless, you know, that's something. So, you know, our office is, our office is doing a lot of different things and we are, 
you know, so lucky to have the passionate Emory students who are like, you know, doing amazing research in the classroom and, and academic work, but then also making time in their lives for, for real connection. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you to the students for sharing kind of your, your why Emory story. I do want to get to this question in the chat. Thanks for throwing another one in there in the Q and A. Um, and this is, I believe all uh, three of you students are not Oxford continuees, but co correct me if I'm wrong, but if any of the students have had experiences with kind of the groups that the Oxford campus has, and I'm guessing Rabbi Jordan, you've had kind of a little more expertise on kind of spiritual and religious life offerings at Oxford. So if anyone can take a second, kind of speak to that experience, because our students that are attending here tonight may be faced with a, a choice of kind of what what campus they would like to start their Emory experience at as well. And so that may be helpful to them. I can speak on that. Um, so CBC, again, which is Collegiate Black Christians, um, we often have joint events with Oxford. So we'll have like a bonfire at the Oxford campus. So all of us will shuttle over there or we'll have like a first year dinner. Like the first year dinner that I got introduced to CBC was both Oxford students and Atlanta students. Um, so I specifically for my organization is a lot of cross campus communication. So we do have separate Bible studies hosted on either campus, but we'll often do like a worship night together or do um, like a spiritual dinner together. And so we have a lot of different events happening there. Um, I know a few of my friends are in the Oxford Catholic fellowship over there. So they have a very bustling and lively Catholic center that a lot of students get involved in there as well. But a lot of religious organizations that I'm in here at Emory and are at the Atlanta campus like to do cross campus um, events. Kind of echoing off of what Joanna kind of mentioned in terms of like the Muslim side or like the so we kind of like like to do collaborations with the Oxford MSA, which is essentially the MSA at Oxford campus. And like one uh, thing that we kind of do every year is called Habibi's Giving, with this, which is a Thanksgiving dinner um, right before or around like Thanksgiving time where we, I mean, MSA goes to the Oxford campus and like they host us and like bring a lot of food. And it's just a lot, a lot of fun just kind of getting to connect with those Oxford students and like, um, spending time with them and engaging like meaningful conversations with them and I feel like that's something that's really really um, important and like additionally like for this year we're planning our like one of our biggest events which is our aid event on Friday April 12th um, and like we have been like collaborating with Oxford MSA and like trying to make sure that all the Oxford students can come to this event and like enjoy the celebration as well so that's something I, I find that, um, first of all, you know, I love going out to Oxford. It is like, it's, you know, it's Emory's original, original campus. And it feels like this, you know, the, the main campus has like a, a enormous sort of like hustle and bustle to it. And sometimes going out to Oxford, I'm like, oh, this is like, has a calmer energy to it. Um, but I, I think partly because it's small and because it's two years, like students like jump into leadership in a way sometimes on the Oxford campus in a way that they might not at the at the Atlanta campus. Um, I find that the Jewish Student Union, which is the is the Jewish organization at at Oxford, you know, there's students who are like, oh, I wouldn't have been a leader at in the Atlanta campus because there are lots of Jewish students here. But because, you know, there were, you know, 100 of us or 75 of us or whatever it was at Oxford, I jumped into leadership because I wanted to, I wanted to be sure Shabbat dinner happened every week. And, um, and we invite people in and their relationships. And the other thing is that so many, so many um, organizations, whether it's the MSA or CBC, or, you know, the Hindu Student Union, like the have a connection and so for oxford continuees like 
in some ways being part of a religious community is a way of like already having connections on the Atlanta campus when you arrive here, which I think is from everything I hear, a major help in that transition to sort of be like, okay, like I know my I know my Oxford people, but I also have this this wider network work of friends through whether it's Bread Coffee House or um, you know, or in really like any number of of student groups. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. We we really do our very best to make sure that we have strong, deep ties and connections between our our awesome friends at Oxford and here on the Atlanta campus. And I love the way you phrase it, Robert Jordan, that that can kind of serve as a connection point to help students kind of have an, an easier transition. And they are kind of done their two years at Oxford and they come over here to the Atlanta campus. So thanks for, for bringing that aspect up as well. <laughs> And I should just mention that the ORSL there, we, we're the OSRL, the Office of Spiritual and Religious Life. But just to confuse things, Oxford's is the <laughs> Office of Spiritual Life. But Reverend uh, Lynn Pace, who's the campus chaplain at Oxford, is amazing and really also helps us, helps us meet students when they're coming over. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, I just have a couple more questions before we wrap it up here. One of them, I want to kind of borrow one that you threw out there as we were kind of discussing before we started the webinar, right, by Jordan, which is kind of, if you haven't already, or if there's anything else you want to share, what is kind of one interfaith experience that you've had in your time here at Emory? I know we've already gotten some examples, so maybe you've exhausted all of them, but if you can share a kind of an opportunity or an experience or maybe a meeting between different clubs or something like that. Because as you've all mentioned, that is really important to who we are. I mean, we have our whole Emory Interfaith Center. And so if there's kind of experience specifically in kind of the interfaith realm that any of you can mention, um, that would be so awesome to share. Yeah, I can kind of go for that. So like I kind of mentioned earlier, beginning of the school year, there was like a um, leaders in the interfaith like dinner at the interfaith center and that was like an amazing opportunity for us to kind of get to know each other and kind of like engage in like dialogues with like uh, people from other faiths and stuff like that and I feel like that was an amazing opportunity just to kind of like get to know people and kind of make those meaningful connections in the future just in case we want to collaborate with like most of those clubs or something like that and like that kind of helped out a ton I, I mean from the MSA's perspective we collaborated with the Hindu students like a couple times um and I feel like engaging in those like meaningful dialogues was kind of something that was very helpful. Um, I think my, I guess, most memorable or like, uh, I guess the memory that comes to mind is um, like working at or doing leadership at Bread Coffee House. So um, Bread Coffee House is a Christian um, organization we have on campus that is very service oriented um, and give out and gives out free coffee and pastries, which is like delicious. <laughs> and um, I work in leadership there and we plan a lot of service trips and uh, like outreach in the community and things like that. And so we have a lot of, and I get to have a lot of really interesting conversations with people who um, are involved in the Christian community at Bread. Um, and we have like discussions about what it means to have a calling and, you know, whether or like can like how can callings change depend on how, you know, our um, idea or belief and like a higher power can change. And so uh, those conversations are so much fun to have. And always I always walk away from with a different perspective than I came, than I came into. Oh, I mentioned um, Sister Soiree earlier, but this is an event hosted by MSA, and it wasn't specifically just for Moses students, like a lot of different women um, on campus came, and so we had catered dinner, and we got to speak about what it means to be a sister, which um, doesn't have to only do with just faith, but just what it's girlhood and what does womanhood mean to you and what it means to have such a strong connection of like-minded women with you at Emory, and so it was a great event. Um, a few of my friends are on MSA exec, so I went just kind of blindly in, but I came out just learning so much, and it was nice to have a lot of people that weren't just Muslim, just students that were just kind of exploring what it means to be, you know, 
a girl in college. So we kind of got to talk about that, take cute pictures. So it was a really cool event that I got to experience here. I'll say that for me, one of my favorite, uh, you know, each year is the multi-faith baccalaureate ceremony. So the kickoff of the commencement weekend is this, um, this event in Canon Chapel in which um, student leaders from a, a multitude of faiths um, share a little bit about the relationship between their time at Emory and the sort of looking back on it and the culmination at graduation and how that has to, how that relates to their, to their faith tradition. And it's always just fascinating to me because I'll see a student who like, oh, I see, know that student all around. And then I'll be like, oh, they're a leader in the Catholic community on campus. And I didn't know that. And I didn't know that, um, you know, this, this part of them that, you know, sometimes there are, aspects of us that are like on full display and sometimes there are aspects of our identity that like it takes a like conversation or an event to sort of see the fullness of it and and it's really a beautiful ceremony and uh you know I know that folks on this call are at the very beginning of their journey you're thinking about Emory but you know after four years to have a moment to to reflect on what what this journey has meant um is really powerful Thank you all for sharing. And for the final question, I want to take kind of you touched Rabbi Jordan on the end of the Emory experience, bring it back to the beginning and ask what is kind of one piece of advice you would share with the students who are on the call tonight, whether that is about kind of the college decision process or maybe kind of something to keep an eye out in their first year of college, wherever they may end up. Um, so I always love to do that because you all have accumulated so much wisdom in your time here at Emory. So if you wanted to share just one little quick piece of advice with our students tonight, I think that would be a great way to wrap up this really wonderful conversation. I'm happy to I'm happy to start just to, to get out of the way that <laughs> it feels like um, so much of your life as a student, you know, from high school is like focused on this like one decision and when you arrive on campus, wherever you arrive, whether that's at Emory or it's another place, just to be patient and to give yourselves time that um, that it that it takes a while to feel at home in a place. And if you can be um, present, if you can be um, just maintain a belief that like I'm gonna find my people and that doesn't happen in the first day and it may not happen in the first week or the first month, but it will happen. Um and and to just, you know, let this be a time of real exploration and deciding who you want to be in the world. And I, you know, just hearing you guys talk about like journeys of like figuring out what you want to study that like just to become arriving with a sense of openness and with patience. Thank you. I'm mm, gonna go. I guess um, one piece of advice I would say, like enjoy your college experience. You're only gonna get one college experience, and I feel like a lot of people come in with the pressure, like I have to get in research, I have to do this and that, I have to like. I feel like yes, that is something that eventually you have to kind of do. But I feel like enjoying the experience and like the meaningful connections that you'll definitely make throughout your college experience is something that I feel like um people have that um like high school students have that preconceived notion of like getting involved in stuff. But I feel like just enjoying the experience and like taking it one day at a time um would be very, very beneficial throughout your college career. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, kind of of going off of Mohammed said is like take your time it's so easy to come in from high school and think that you have to like get involved in a million clubs and a million classes and million extra curriculars but I think that's one thing that getting involved in like religious life at Emory has taught me is just like if you're going to get somewhere you're going to get somewhere at your time like there, there's time and place for everything so you can take your time and truly enjoy the things that you're getting involved in at campus because again you only have one campus experience you only have one college experience so after those four years are done you don't want to look back and say oh I 
I wish I did this. I wish I did this. So definitely take your time, explore different things, and you're going to get where you need to be where when you need to be there. So definitely take your time. Yeah, I think um, kind of like echoing the sentiments that have been expressed. I think one thing that a lot of students kind of come in is like this idea that um, I'm going to go to Emory and I'm going to be pre-law or pre-med or go into the business school or do all of these things and are like so focused on like what it means like on like living their life to like kind of get to the next step, which is grad school or maybe a really big or a really big career or whatever it is that like you kind of felt to realize that you are living your life for yourself like you like this life is yours like you should not be living your life to please medical school admissions like you should not be making every single decision in your life based on what like law school admissions are going to think about and so like taking the time yes be focused on your future but also like taking the time to know that like you are a person and you are allowed to have interests and things that excite you that maybe are really not that relevant to medical school and maybe really not that relevant to law school or whatever else you want to do out there in the world and being and holding those and thinking that they're important because they are. Wow, some awesome pieces of advice. Thank you all so much to our wonderful, wonderful panelists. I have learned so much in this call and I am sure that those of you who are attending have learned um, something as well. To the students who are attending tonight, thanks for being here. And this has been such a wonderful hour uh, with our amazing panelists. We wish you the best of luck as you kind of make this decision um, wherever you end up. And we certainly hope it is at Emory. We know that you will find yourself kind of a second home in a way. And so I hope that you're able to make the most out of that time. Find the spaces um, that are meaningful to you. Make the connections and friendships that will potentially last you a lifetime. So thank you. Thank you once again. Congratulations once again. If you have any additional questions that come up for you throughout this process, I am happy to serve as a resource. You can find all of our contact information in the Office of Undergraduate Admission on our website. We're also going to be posting this um, panel on our Emory YouTube channel. And so this conversation will be there to you to kind of refer to, to come back to, if kind of there's anything that is sticking with you, is on your mind that you wanted to share um, with your friends and family as well. So again, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to those of you who attended. This was such a wonderful event. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, night, whatever time it is where you are. Thanks so much and take care, everyone.